It's July 28, 2011. We're in Shanghai for the World Championship Final of the Men's 200m Individual Medley. Ryan Lochte and Michael Phelps have separated themselves from the rest of the field and are currently locked in a battle for the world title. The way this race ended represented a major turning point for swimming in more ways than one. It resulted in both a power shift of the sport's greatest rivalry and ended a long-standing drought of human improvement. With the timing, the characters involved, and the overall state of the sport, this race immediately became an instant classic, and in the decade plus that followed, still holds up as the standard of greatness. To understand why, we need to take a look back. Before we let these last few meters play out, we need to understand the history of the 2IM at the World Championships. From 1973 to 2001, eight different swimmers won the world title, and three of them brought the world record down with it. Aside from one man going back to back, the 200 IM saw a new world champion every year it was contested. Next year in Barcelona, an 18-year-old Michael Phelps stepped in and broke that trend by completing the first ever three-peat in the event, all while taking the world record down for himself. At the Rome Championships in 2009, Beijing bronze medalist Ryan Lochte won the world title and took Phelps' world record down even further. Nobody realized it at the time, but these two were set to dominate the short IM for a long time, ruining any parity the event once had. Speaking of Phelps and Lochte, here they are at the 2011 World Championships battling it out for the gold medal in the 2 IM yet again. There's a lot at stake for both swimmers in this final. For Michael, it would be his fourth gold in five years, and for Ryan, it would be back-to-back -back golds, which is a feat only two other swimmers have achieved. Now, this is far from the first time these two have shared the water. In fact, their in-pool rivalry goes back a long time before the turn of the decade. Ryan Lochte's international career began at the 2004 Athens Olympics, where he won his first gold medal alongside Phelps in the men's 800 freestyle relay. A few days later, the two would compete against each other in the 200 IM final. To nobody's surprise, Phelps took gold ahead of Lochte by over one and a half seconds. A year later at the World Championships, they matched up again in the same event where Phelps won back-to-back -back golds and Lochte took bronze. In 2006, Lochte became a three-time short course world champion without Phelps in the way, but couldn't match up with him a few months later at the Pan Pacific Championships. A year later in the long pool, Lochte would have to settle for another pair of silver medals in both medley events. So in their first five races in the medley events, Phelps won every single time. Not sure if that could be really labeled as a rivalry at this point, but it's not like Lochte was just another guy Phelps beat. He quickly became one of his most consistent competitors and always kept it close with the best swimmer in the world. Plus, he was only getting better as time went on. The 2008 Olympics presented an opportunity for Lochte to ditch that Robin label by finally beating his Batman. Through the prelims and semis of both the 200 and 400 IM, their gold medal matchups were set. Unfortunately, 2008 Michael Phelps just so happened to be the best swimmer that's ever existed, and he ran away with those two gold medals, plus a few more just to show off. Lochte could only place as high as bronze, a step down from where he finished in Athens. So now two Olympics and two world championships have gone by, with Lochte not getting a single win over Phelps in the IM. At this point, his gold medal chances in the medleys were looking bleak as Phelps' ascension was far outpacing his own. But if we flip back to the 2011 final, Lochte actually holds the lead over Phelps in these final meters. This is the same guy who spent years losing to the guy below him, so what exactly changed from Beijing to now? To put it simply, Ryan Lochte got better. Like, a lot better. After the Olympics, Lochte got back to work in preparation for the 09 World Championships. Once he got in the water in Rome, he went the f off and finally won a world title in both the 200 and 400 IM, breaking the world record in the former. Now, sure, it probably helped a little bit that Phelps didn't swim those events that year, but the times Lochte put up showed everyone that he was a force to be reckoned with in the IMs, specifically the 200, as he had just become the fastest performer in history. A rematch between the two couldn't come soon enough, and that's exactly what fans got at the 2010 National Championships. On that fateful Friday night in Irvine, Phelps and Lochte matched up once again in the 200 IM with a pair of world team spots on the line. They quickly separated themselves from the field through the first half, and Lochte ended up going right by Phelps at the last turn and turned on the afterburners to pull away from him and finally get a win in the 200 IM, though he'll tell you that it definitely wasn't the first time that happened. With Lochte and Phelps finishing 1-2, a world championship rematch was on the horizon. 
One year later in Shanghai, Lochte and Phelps stood side by side ready to battle it out again for the world title in the 200 medley. Through the first 25 meters, the two Americans hang with the rest of the field and Phelps wastes no time building a slight lead over Lochte heading into the first turn. Now swimming backstroke, Lochte uses his championship winning underwaters to come out of the wall ahead of Phelps and maintains that lead through the entire 50. They turn for breaststroke just two tenths of a second apart and a little further behind the world record line, which is also representative of Lochte's best time. He hasn't exactly been on that time recently, and beating it here in Shanghai would be a huge personal best for him. But more than that, a new world record would mean the end of a long-standing drought swimming has gone through in recent years. When Lochte broke the 200 IM world record in 2009, it was certainly a big deal, but it wasn't anything uncommon for that year's world championships. Rome 2009 saw a mind-boggling 43 world records broken across the entire swimming competition. That's more than the previous four world championships combined. How could this be? You know how people say it's gotta be the shoes when someone jumps really high? Well, swimmers don't wear shoes, so it's gotta be the suits, right? Turns out it was the suits. Prior to Rome, FINA ruled on the construction of high-tech swimsuits after community members made claims of increased buoyancy, stability, and endurance in certain speedo and arena suits. The Arena X Glide specifically had been made with polyurethane, which FINA didn't like, and as a result, implemented strong limits on what suit makers could make their tech suits out of. However, these limitations wouldn't go into effect until 2010, meaning anyone who could buy them would be allowed to race in these super suits at the 09 World Championships. There were mixed emotions about these suits being used at the meet. Coach Bob Bowman didn't like how quickly the records were falling after all the years it took to get them where they are without super suits. Ryan Lochte, on the other hand, wasn't buying into all the complaining. In fact, he didn't even wear the X-Glide when he broke the 2IM record. So was it really all about the suits? Eh, kind of. When the super suit ban went into effect in 2010, the entire year went by without a single world record being broken, almost as if they were now unreachable. It became pretty common for the top swimmers to be well off the world record line in whatever race was on that day. That trend continued through 2011, and now we sit over halfway through the World Championships with zero new world records. Flipping back to the 2IM, it looks like the same thing will happen here. Lochte stays ahead of Phelps through the brushstroke and turns for freestyle, still two tenths of a second behind the world record. He gets a great turn to maintain the lead as both swimmers now throw everything they have into this last 50. That brings us here, just shy of 25 meters from the end of the race. It's Lochte vs Phelps yet again with Ryan holding the advantage. Phelps is back in the water looking to reclaim his medley world title, but above him is Lochte looking to defend what's his and beat the guy who stopped him previously. Will we see a miracle comeback from the greatest swimmer to ever do it? Does the younger challenger finally grab a win over the dominant veteran? Can any of these guys break the world record and finally move the sport forward again? Let's see for ourselves. Welcome to a moment in history. Hey, thanks for watching. If you made it this far, don't forget to give this video a like, and while you're down there, consider subscribing for more content like this. If you're interested in another instant classic involving a rival beating Phelps, click the video right here. If you want to see a story of a pair of underdogs prevailing, click the one right here. Until next time, good night, and good swim, bro.